let me tell you a story about these two dimensional beings called the flatlanders now these flatlanders as you can see but wait before you learn about the flatlanders you should know about this guy when albert einstein gave the theory of relativity the muslim world who had some knowledge of science was very excited they very excitedly proposed the theory that the jinnites the jinns the jinnat are energy so albert einstein said e is equal to mc squared albert einstein said mass can be converted into energy and energy can be converted into mass now energy can be converted into mass so if jinns are energy and they can convert into mass they can take human forms and appear inside the room suddenly and they can uh, con uh, suleiman alayhi salam and the throne of bilqis uh, the jinn the ifrit could uh, convert the throne of it will place into energy and energy can travel in very fast speed and in a blink of an eye it can come to jerusalem from sana in yemen uh, in a blink of an eye because it was it because the the the, the bilqis's throne was converted into energy and it could immediately travel these were theories that were propagated since very long now i have no problem with this it might be true as well but we should take care that a theory that has been given to describe an unseen world of islam the unseen the, the world of ghaib of islam that theory is okay is acceptable only until it is said that this is not absolute truth we do not believe that this is absolute truth means we, we do not believe that it has been unsolved completely because it is ghaib it is unseen we do not know if it, if it will ever come to uncover it completely so today i am going to share you another theory which uh, deals with the fourth dimension now albert einstein only in 1921 proved that fourth dimension exists okay first you must understand this if you do not if you want to know that how he proved this there's very interesting story go on the youtube and in fact i will link a video that would explain how he proved the fourth dimension exist on the description inshallah so now let's hear a story about the flatlanders let me tell you a story about these two dimensional beings called the flatlanders now these flatlanders as you can see they have they are two dimensional beings they have a length they have a breadth but they have no height they are absolutely thin now it's not that they just don't have any height rather they don't have any sense of the direction called up they do not know that up exists they can only go this way this way this way this way they cannot go up they can't even see up they do not know this direction exists they are insensitive towards this direction now these beings lives inside these small blocks these small squares which are their homes and uh, these these boundaries are their walls okay now this is a story about this lucky little guy this little guy though he lives beside two other flatlanders but he cannot see them because they they he because they are separated by walls but he can actually open up a door and then go through the door and meet the other person and then close the door and now he can no longer see the other person you understand this so these are their houses and if there is no door in between he can never go through this he will be hit by the wall okay now one day this flatlander he was just roaming about and in his house and he was visited by a being of the third dimension called a hand this hand actually put one finger in his room and to him he could only see the fingerprints the base of the finger he could only see this base but to him this suddenly these strange figures suddenly appeared out of nowhere this didn't exist here right now and it suddenly appeared because he could not see up now he later on tells to his people that suddenly something appeared in his room and the other people do not believe him then what happens is one day this outer worldly this third dimensional hand picks him up and he then turns him in another direction now he himself is enchanted towards the direction called up but other worldly being the th the third dimensional being this hand can actually make him turn to the directions and make him see things he could never see before now he was picked up and as soon as he was picked up and turned he could suddenly see the whole world at the same time he could see through the through the walls the walls didn't mean anything anymore 
So now he can see his neighbor while he's inside his house. He can see everything in the bird's eye view. Now, he is suddenly put down in his friend's home and his friend is then suddenly uh, scared. Then his friend is suddenly scared that where did you come from? The lucky guy explains to his friend that he was taken by another dimensional being to another dimension, to a higher dimension. And he could see through the walls and he could see things like, the, the, like he had never seen before. He could see crazy things. And uh, the, his friend asks him that, tell me, where did he take you? And he says like, I don't know. He did not take me this way. He did not take me this way. He did not take me this way. I don't know. Where did he take me? I can't point towards it because he is insentient. He doesn't even know that this direction exists. This direction does not exist in his reality. So, so now imagine this whole story. If these beings were the third dimensional beings and a fourth dimensional being is actually picking up a third dimensional being and he's suddenly disappearing from his room and he can now see things that he has never seen before. And then he can suddenly be present in some other room or while a third dimensional being is in a room suddenly a fourth dimensional being appears in his room or the fourth dimensional being pushes some stuff around in his room and he gets scared the story that you just saw was not mine uh, Carl Sagan the astrophysicist any astrophysicist any person who has keen interest in astrophysics knows the name of Carl Sagan. He was the legend, died, uh, died in 1996. He was the author of uh, Cosmos, also he did television shows called Cosmos in the 1980s. And uh, this portion, which I just showed you, uh, it was performed in better way by Carl Sagan in 1980s. I wanted to, for, first I wanted to link that video in this video, but our channel has recently suffered copyright strikes. So I did not want any more copyright. So I performed what he did by my own self, not as well as he did. So Carl Sagan, the legend astrophysicist, he made this thought experiment and uh, it, it was to show that how we perceive a flatlander would be, how we perceive a being of the two dimension would be. That's exactly how a fourth dimensional being would be perceiving us. Okay, so... What do you think? Do the jinns live in the fourth dimension? I'm not saying that they are not a form of energy. I'm not debunking the old theory. Even though, the point, I would like to say one thing, that uh, jinnite are made of fire. The jinnat are made of fire. Now, people say that fire is energy. This is wrong. Fire is not energy. Yes, fire gives energy. It gives heat and light. But the flame itself that burns, it's actually oxygen and uh, uh, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide and gases. Gases that are burning and those are actually molecules. Those are actually particles, not uh, uh, not energy. So, I'm not saying that because jinn are made of fire, it does not mean that they are not energy. They might be energy. They might be. I, mean, I do not know what their form is. They are basically not organic. They are basically not uh, uh, made of play like us they are def they are definitely having a different building block than us so i don't know what they are made of made up of and i do not know the reality of their world but uh, but there is this question that do you think that they might be living in the fourth dimension